Yo, what up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Giving Game the Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky! And today's guest is a special one, y'all. I mean, I like to call this man a young legend. He's been doing this a long time, and I'm pretty sure he's got some great gems to give out today. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all probably seen him in training day. Y'all probably seen him in the Great Debaters. All that abduction, the Purge series, Morgan Cooper's You Shoot videos, the iconic Black Panther movie. And now my man is stepping behind the scenes, writing, directing with his new film series, 5150. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Denzel Williams. Right. Yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Now, I, I like number three. Yeah, that, I like, was nice. like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was nice. My guy. Yo, what's up? What's up, Denzel? How you doing, brother? Man, I'm chilling. I'm blessed, man. How you doing? I'm, 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 I'm feeling great. I'm feeling, I'm highly feeling favored. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, this is what I meant to say, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always smiles when yeah. we get together. It is. It, it is. is. It's always smiles. It is, man. I remember last time we were at the Roosevelt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pool, yeah. We, you know, yeah. roaming around with the camera yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. It's, 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 it's jokes. It's good times, man. And, and to be honest, like, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Grateful for the friendship we have. I'm yeah. grateful to, to continue to have connections like that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Especially in this industry that's like... I did. Look, we're already jumping in the podcast. Yeah, right? we already we are we are jumping <laughs> yeah. right in. Like, but, but but you know, especially in an industry where you you uh, you meet people in passing, and, mm-hmm. and not everybody has the same motives or yeah. intentions that you do. So yeah. it's it's always just good to meet genuine people, and I want to yeah. give you your flowers for that. No man, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's that's what this whole podcast is for, man. I want to give you yours because I remember when I first. I don't think I've ever like actually told you, but I mean, I've seen I've seen you your whole career, and I remember I've watched the great. I've seen all the movies, so I was like. Damn, this is trippy. Like, <laughs> now I'm cool with it. Like, this is it's, it's weird, man. And that's what Thanks, it's man. like in this in this business. And you're cool too. So that's why I was like, all right, cool. You ain't like an asshole. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to my family. Yeah, right. <laughs> they raise you good. Shout out to the people who love me, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, like I always start this with um, you know, where are you from? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from LA, born and raised. LA born yeah, and raised. Yeah, baby. LA born and raised. <laughs> No, 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 because I got an issue with that. Yeah, what's the issue? When people start claiming their hoods, like people people start claiming where they're from. Like yeah, they, yeah. They, they take so much pride in where they're from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, what, what I meant to say was I met this one uh, uh, this one cat, I, and I remember briefly he had, like, this L.A. hat on. He had just got out the military. He was like, yeah, man, I rep all L.A. all day. You know, I'm from south of the town, blah, blah, blah. You know, I went and did my south tour, and they were trying to punk me because other people for, from uh, uh, other states and whatnot, and I had to make sure I repped L.A. I was like, man, so not only did you go to, to fight for the U.S. government, <laughs> but you felt the need, the imperative need to yeah. rep L.A. that hard. <laughs> They, hey man, people, people, people are strong behind their city, man. Like bro, they get you, it tatted, they get it. Hey, right? Are you getting tax cuts? Yeah, you think you're getting tax cuts? <laughs> Definitely not. Shit, I've never felt the need to rep something that hard. <laughs> oh man, I'm from the from the beautiful city of Palos Verdes. <laughs> oh man, where our education educational system is fantastic. What's up? What's up? Where you from? Right. <laughs> Top that. <laughs> On lunch, we could go off campus to the restaurants. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> y'all could do that? No. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I said, y'all could do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could. We could. Damn. For our lunch, we got to go off campus. It was cool. And then the seniors, you know, because you, you get to drive and everything like that. So Whoa. you would hop in, go to in and out You would go to, like, uh, there's a... Um, a uh, Mexican restaurant called LBJ's where they would, you know, oh, tacos, LeBron James' burritos. restaurant? No. <laughs> He'd be like, Taco Tuesday! <laughs> Taco Tuesday! <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> That's hysterical. I mean, you know the acronym growing up, but you never yeah. think, oh, LeBron James' restaurant? Yeah. No, it, it was not LeBron James' tacos. It wasn't him doing Taco Tuesday, I it promise. It wasn't him doing Taco Tuesday. I want to dive right in with Let's this because I mean, you, you, got a, you got a great career. You've been doing it. Now you're behind the scenes. So I really want to try to like touch on everything I can within the time I got you for. So let's do it. <laughs> Let's try it. Well, uh, how, did, how did you get into acting? Really, really happenstance. I love to say that I like tripped into acting mm. uh, because it, it wasn't of, of my own doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I, and I would say, uh, I, w- I, I would compare it to the book, The Alchemist, where they talk about beginner's luck. Okay. You know what I mean? Because in the book, um, they say God gives you a gift. And that gift can lay dormant with inside of you. Yeah. 
So think like if you're playing baseball and then all of a sudden you catch the, the pot fly. Mm. It gives you the confidence and the courage that you could do it. Or if you're playing basketball and all of a sudden you put up a three point and you're like, oh man, oh, I can man. keep doing that. Yeah. You know, that's the, the beginner's luck. And for me, it was acting. Um, mm. Beforehand, I wanted to be, uh, I actually wanted to be an animator. I wanted really? to draw cartoons. Yeah, Shut man. My, uh, my, my dad's a mechanical engineer um, and he's real precise and he loves to draw. And so that was the thing, like growing up, I love drawing and I love cars. Yeah. You know, and those are two mainstays that are uh, two hobbies that I still really enjoy to this day. But even then, I thought that was going to be my career path. Yeah. Acting seemed so far out as a concept. I didn't even know it was possible. And this is at the age 10. Wow. So my parents uh, get a call. You know, there's a voicemail that's left from a management company saying like, hey, we think your, your son would be fantastic. You know, you should come out and audition. Uh, we 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 love to have them and represent them. And my parents are thinking like, well, what? And you didn't have no profiles, no LA cat, no nothing. Nothing. Like that. What? I have no family members who are in the business, bro. What? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh, where is Where's, this? Yeah. How how did you guys discover me? Comes to find out. Long story short, my cousin, God bless her soul, thought uh, I was very charismatic at a young age, even though I was very shy. Yeah. Quite the contrary, but she thought I was charismatic. And so she submitted my name, um, and they called me. Come to find out later, the management company was a scam. Yeah. <laughs> it ended up being a scam. They ended up taking money from my parents. Uh, but that was my beginner's luck. And the reason why, Ricky, is, is wow. I'm standing there, and I'm performing just an improv scene with a couple of the kids. And I, I, I don't remember the moment. I remember the feeling. I remember the environment. I yeah. remember the people. But I seriously just blacked out in the moment and i couldn't tell you what i was doing i couldn't tell you what i was improving but i just felt something inside he was in the zone yeah, yeah. And, it, and it and it gave me um a voice and it gave me courage and it gave me confidence in a way that i had never experienced before and again this is happening all at age 10 so yeah, i don't 10 years old, i don't yeah. really know myself you know wow um and from then on, you know, it, 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 that's that was my beginner's luck. That was the bug. Yeah. From then on, uh, my first job was literally training day. Shut the fuck. Literally up. training day right out the gate. Wait. Okay. So how, that how, was my. How how did you get training day? Like your first like, did, like after that, like you know, the management company. Did they get you that, or did you go to another age? Like how? Did... <sighs> we lost a lot of money with the management company. Okay. Um, my mom did some digging, some investigative, you know, detective work as she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and she found out about background acting. Yeah, so, background, man. Central casting? I couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. I'd really? be lying if I said, you know, you would have to ask my mother. Okay. But anyway, uh, she, she found a source uh, to where I could be hired as a background actor. Uh-huh. And she was like, you know, you got to commit to doing background acting if you, if you really love this. And so they had submitted me, and they needed a young boy to play Macy Gray's nephew, which was only supposed to be a background role. What? You know, there were no lines written for that. Really? Now, what ended up happening was I get to set, you know, I meet Denzel, I meet Ethan Hawke, I meet uh, Antoine Fuqua, yeah. and, uh, you know, Denzel's kind of talking, chatting it up. It's like, hey, man, just be natural, blah, blah, blah. To me, oh, this is all going over my head. I'm, yeah. I'm in Nickerson Garden. I'm, yeah. I'm getting oh, Oreos. Yeah, 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 There's okay. a production <laughs> happening. I, I have no clue what, 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 what this is, man. I'm in Nickerson Garden. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know. Oh my and God. for cats from LA, yeah, niggas a cigar, niggas like, cigar yeah, ain't nothing to play with. You, you, you don't just go there to be eating no Oreo. No, 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 no. You make, make, make sure you out of there yeah. by sundown. Um, what? But you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm chilling on set, and so Denzel starts asking questions as, he, as we're doing the scene. You know, he's, he's moving around with the gun. Yeah. He's like, uh, Dimitri, are you back there? You know, and, and I come out and I say, yeah, and he's like, is anybody there? no? You know, and so because I. Had, set those lines, which yeah. was natural to me. You know, I'm, I'm just playing off of whatever he's given me. Yeah. Uh, after they wrapped the film, you know, they called my parents and they're like, hey, so your son said a couple lines audibly. He wasn't supposed to do that. However, we are going to be bumping his role up to a principal role. What? And that's how I got my first credit. Shut the fuck up. So you no it, lie. That's that how just I got my first instinctually... Credit. Just based off, I mean, that's, I mean, I always feel like that's a, that's a good gym to just be natural. Like, sure. Because really if you would have just been like, you know what, I'm scared. I don't know what to, I shouldn't say anything. I'm just background. But you were like, no, this is what I would naturally do in this moment. I put it this way. As a kid, mm -hmm. or even if you go and, and, and you watch kids playing at the playground, right? Yeah. They don't know what pretend is. Mm. In their mind, they believe they're pirates. They believe yeah. they're astronauts. Yeah. They believe they're scientists. Whatever they have set within their imagination, they believe it. Yeah. And you can't tell them any different. 
yeah. if there's a fort or a castle yeah. or, or, you know, somebody's, you know, throwing cannonballs yeah. at them, they, they believe everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of, of, I guess, being naive in a way and having like a childlike imagination. Wow. And that's uh, what you try to get back to as an actor. Like absolutely. now you want to get back to that childlike imagination because that's going to take you far in this business. Oh, like, my God, man. I mean, it's not just this business. It's life in general. Mm. Um Life wants to rob all of us of that childlike innocence. Life wants to rob all of us of that imagination. Mm. You know, if you ask any young child what they want to be, their dreams are so far and so expansive. Yeah. And, and they can be anything they want to be and more. As long as they know about it, they can be it. Yeah. Now, if you ask an adult, now we're going to start factoring in, well, how much am I intaking this month? Mm. You know, who do I got to take care of? How many dependents? That's fine. Uh, well, you know, these are my dreams and goals. And one day I'd like to buy a house. Well, to be blunt, fuck all that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, do you believe it's possible? Do you, are you dead set on it? Yeah. And and what's resonating inside of here? In your heart. What yeah. is what is your core? What is your spirit telling you? You know yeah. what I mean? That's that's a good one, man. That's a good one. That's true. And again, you start thinking about the obstacles in the way when yeah. you're a child, there are no obstacles. It's like anything is possible. You anything really believe that. Possible. But now, you know, once you get older, you're like, ah. I can't do that. I could all the self doubt and all this that just comes in. That's crazy. I mean, it seems so stereotypical, and it seems like you know you're contrived. Uh, how would you say like uh, advice that you would give somebody? But it truly yeah. is possible. Yeah, you can truly be whatever you want to be. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just the manifestation of thought, mm. um, and it's about listening to your spirit. It's about you know being connected around you. It's about you know being tapped into God and your self being. You yeah. know what I mean. Um, but again, why would why would anybody want you to know all that? Yeah, because then why would the government? Why would America want you? To want know you to know that? like that you yeah. could be all you can be. Listen, before I before I get on a tangent, if you yeah. go look at like ancient <laughs> civilizations or you know just just more um more more established uh you know how how would you say? I'm searching for the words here. If you just go to more established countries, mm -hmm. you know. Um, cultural backgrounds and whatnot, you'll yeah. find that they're really more tapped into what used to be, what we mm -hmm. need to get back to, you know, understanding like the power of what's here, the resources that we have, yeah. nature, how it offers, just listening to the spirit, listening to the mind, you know, yeah. what's concentrated on your thought, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like th that they don't really teach, especially with yeah, the oh, yeah, American system. Here. Why no. would they? Yeah. That's your superpower. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yes, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, it, but, but it takes an immense amount of focus. It takes an immense amount of discipline. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing is people don't really got discipline anymore. Everybody wants to fast in this microwave society. Man, it's the microwave society. That's facts, man. No, for real. For so, real. So, so how did you um, garner that discipline early on and apply that to your career? I would say, you know, it's a combination of my parents – set a really, really solid foundation for me. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is one of the hardest working individuals I know. Mm. And I always say still to this day, if I could be just an ounce of what my father is, I would be very, very happy as a, as a young man myself. It's beautiful. Um, but even then, my mom was always a hardworking individual. You know, she was working two, three jobs before she even met my, my dad. And then even then, uh, once they both met, you know, both of them were working jobs to provide for me and my siblings. Um, uh, and my mom made the hard dedication to really, you know, help me move my career forward. Yeah. But it was only until she seen that I was that I was I was serious about it, or at least I had a genuine curiosity about it. Because my parents, you know, thankfully, and, and and I truly still thank them to this day for it. Is whatever me, my sisters, my brothers really wanted to do, yeah, they were there to foster that. So wow. you know, if it was like you know playing sports, uh, computer science, they were back. You know, you. They were back it, yeah. yeah. And it's all within reason. You know, we got to yeah. show the initiative and we have to show that we truly care and that yeah. we're going to keep it up. But, you know, whether we wanted pets or whatnot, they'd at least try it within reason. Mm. You know, gotcha. they, they uh, provided such a solid base uh, to where we could grow. And it's, and it's all about, to be honest, when, when you do have kids and I don't have kids, but I could only yeah. imagine it's about just just showing them what's possible. Again, tying it back to, you know, the beginner's luck, the exactly. land of milk and honey, just yeah. to know that it's possible. Yeah. So that was really my foundation. And to be honest with you, Ricky, as I got older, no, I haven't always been the most disciplined. I know my early 20s, I definitely, you know, tricked off here and there. And it was like, yeah. you know, I went uh, kind of off the path and whatnot. And then 
you know, thankfully I have individuals like my god sister. I have like a, a great uh, friend circle yeah. who I think we we motivate each other. Yeah. Um, it's hard to stay disciplined on your own, but you just always have to uh, set goals. Yeah. And for me, there were always goals in my mind that I wanted to achieve. And even now, you know, in my adulthood, there's so much more that I want to achieve yeah. where, you know, certain milestones that I can point to yeah. almost literally just feel like parts of the journey. It just feels like, oh, we That's stopped off. Is. Yeah. We stopped off at this gas station. We stopped off at this amusement park. Well, that was really cool. Yeah. We still got to get to the end of the earth. Still got to get there. You still, you know, acknowledge your 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 checkpoints along your journey. Like you Absolutely. don't take them for granted. You're like, damn, this is like, no, you don't want to no, just no, blow no. through those. No. You want to really, you know, appreciate them in that moment. Because sometimes you may be too focused on the end goal that you just blow past. And you're like, damn, I didn't really like sit on and take it all in. More so now, of course. And yeah. I think that's just of age. Yeah. That's, that's just of, you know, the maturation of us getting older. But uh, uh Early on, I was even very, very much appreciated. Like the different milestones that I did have, I even reflect back on them, and think like, "Wow, yeah, that was special." Like, like wow. what? Like what? All that, I mm. think, was 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 a really special moment for me. Just to to be in television. Mm. Um, it's funny because I go out for comedy roles now, and I'm like, ah, I'm not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm such like a dry humor. Yeah, yeah. My my my. You know, sensibilities are pretty much even kill like this. Yeah. Uh, but back then it was so slapstick and it was so, so animated. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that was fun to do as a child. Yeah. But I yeah. wanted nothing more but to do that. I wanted nothing more but to be on Nickelodeon and Disney. And I had that experience. And thankful that didn't rob me of my innocence or it didn't pigeonhole me as a character. I was yeah. able to to break out of that, you know, because not everybody's lucky. Some people really got uh, shepherded within the Disney uh, Nickelodeon machine, and then that yeah. became their character. Yeah, that's and that's they all. are, yeah. Yeah, that defines them, mm -hmm. you know. It, it didn't define me. Mm. Um, so all that is one of them. Uh, the Great Debaters, I'm forever, forever grateful for oh, that film. Man. I mean, just... That was the one, man. Not only from the people I, I got the privilege to work with, but to really truly hone in on what was my dramatic voice, mm. uh, to truly discover uh, my capabilities as a young dramatic uh, actor. Yeah. Um, that, that was the first time, I mean, first time I traveled on a jet and the yeah. first time, oh, you know, wow. we opened up to a city where yeah. we were being, you know, paraded for and, and, you know, meeting different executives and things like there's so many takeaways from that. Yeah. And then just the historical representation of us and to be in a film yeah. at that time where, there weren't that many roles yeah. uh, that we had the privilege of playing. It was either uh, best friend to the white kids next door, or yeah. it was either, you know, young thug number two. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 yeah, exactly. Or coming from a <laughs> troubled neighborhood, but he's a really good kid. You know, yeah. it's, it's the stereotypical roles. And, and Great Debaters was something for me to really break out of that mold mm. and showcase who I am. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't want to put, you know, too much importance on myself or claim that I'm higher than now, but uh, thankfully I... I that just wasn't me being the hood kid, you know. Mm. I, I, I was always in the books. Yeah. Um. I was always in the art. Uh. I, again, we talk about that childlike innocence and yeah. imagination. That was me. So I felt like young James Farmer Jr. was representative of that. So, uh, so that's one of them. And then you know, there's many more. Yeah. Listen, you got we, you. We, you, we, you we, that's what I'm saying. You guys. I'm like, man, it's so hard to like. <laughs> I'm trying to concise this, like really compact it all in this. But I'm, I'm gonna try my best. But those are like some. Huge accomplishments, man. Like, that's beautiful. And, like, so, I mean, you went from training day, and then you got, you know, all that great debaters. On your acting journey early on, were you taking classes, or was this all natural? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely was taking classes. Listen, it, this this isn't all natural. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't. I, I wasn't that great of an actor. Mm. Um the beginner's luck is the point just to show you it's possible. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to continue polishing. Putting that work in. Putting yeah, that work exactly, in. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. The 10,000 hours. Yep. I'm I glad remember, I will. I remember sitting in acting class and just thinking like, damn, why don't I understand this? Or, you know, mm -hmm. that's such a, 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 you know, looking at my peers and thinking, oh, man, their performances are so brilliant. Yeah. I don't understand what they're doing and what I'm not. You know, in your head, you're thinking you're being natural when, in fact, you're putting on a show. And, yeah. Uh, Acting is, is very much so like riding a bike to a certain extent. Mm. Like you have to learn the mechanics of it and they could throw all the techniques at the world at you. Yeah. 
But then once you kind of really learn yeah. how, how to bring naturalism into your acting, yeah. then you start to throw all those, uh, you know, all the this technique and that technique yeah, and yeah. crawl like a tiger yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so a lot much. of techniques out once there. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you ride a bike you and ride. then you get on the bike and you just start riding. Mm. And then now you start jumping off of curbs and now you start changing gears mm. and now you start riding uphill. Popping wheelies. And that's, and doing, yeah. that's how you start molding and shaping and crafting the exterior of, of, of your actual skill set. Mm. But past that, it really is just getting over the barrier of can you be natural? Yeah. Do you know what that source is? Do you know how to ground yourself within a performance? And that was probably the, the biggest hurdle for me while I was, you know, learning acting. Yeah. Um, improv was always uh, something that came natural to me. Okay. Uh, the, the, the play pretend was yeah, always yeah, fun yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What classes did you take along your journey? You know what? I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna... I, 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 if if I knew all the names, I knew all the names. Yeah. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I would love to to give mention to two people, two very important people. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Andrew McGarry, and he still owns a place called The Shop. Okay. Uh, which is over in North Hollywood. He used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> oh man, Andrew, he was uh fantastic. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but he he always had interesting techniques where you know as children he would get us sort of active and playing, and we would do like little sports games, and then he would translate that into the work, and then show us how they could be one and the same, how you want to be loose, how you want to be you know uh, responsive yeah, within yeah. your performances, not too strict to just the page, but also too to like having a connection right here. Yeah. Um, so he's wonderful, and I would still send anybody to this day uh, over to him. Okay. Um, and then another one of my coaches, uh, she was so instrumental within helping me not only book mm -hmm. The Great Debaters, but also uh, I did this film with Wes Craven called My Soul to Take. She helped me uh, really ground myself in a character. And then unfortunately, she passed away shortly after I finished oh, okay. uh, The Great Debaters. Um, but she really unlock the key for me uh -huh. in a new in a new way um and then denzel sort of sort of took over what was her name don't give me the line on here because i want to give her proper respects okay okay, you know okay. What I mean? yeah so so i don't want to uh misspeak right now at the at the current moment but yeah if it comes to me i'll tell you okay okay um but no she she was fantastic and she she's somebody who i'll, I'll you know great greatly forever cherish All right um and then, yeah, once once I started working with with Denzel mm -hmm. and, you know, other more seasoned actors and whatnot, it, it's one of those things where how they say steel sharpens steel. Yeah. You know, so just being around them. Yeah. Um, it's not so much that you're afraid to keep up. You have no choice but to keep up. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and you're going to learn. You're going to yeah. see how effortless it is for them. You, you see how some of the greats, they could be sitting here having a conversation. Yeah. And then they know, oh, my scene's coming up. Give me a second. And then turn it on. That's facts. You know I've seen, I mean? um, uh, what you call it, does that really fucking well? Uh, Rob Morgan. Oh, <laughs> Rob, Rob Morgan. is great. Rob, yeah. You call and tell him we're on set. My man, shooting. Rob, what up? <laughs> Rob Morgan is co we, and that that's one of the funniest motherfuckers, man. He like, really he's, is. He's funny as shit. Oh, uh, listen. Uh, I'm, try, I'm, 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 I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna tell him I gotta get him on here, but he. Yeah, yeah people he, don't know Rob when he's not on camera. Oh, man. He's fucking <laughs> hysterical. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's hilarious, but he's one of those, like, we'll be talking hilarious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they're like, all right, and action. And I'm like a drop in, and, yeah. the, and it's a serious ass scene. And you know, Rob, he's like s real serious cut, like man. And he's playing the father, and I was like, "Yeah, what the fuck?" And then cut. <laughs> okay, Ricky, that shit was crazy. But I was like, "Yo, you could just cut it on like he's it's, so good." Yeah. But at this point, it, it's such like a uh, that's again going back to the key word discipline. Mm. There's such a discipline. Um, uh, in honoring the character, yeah, you know what I mean. There's there's a, a respect mm -hmm. that's there. You know, Rob does his homework, mm -hmm. and I know he does his homework because right. he asks questions from the material mm -hmm. that you know he's being thoughtful of his character. Yeah. Um, and once you kind of have it in your DNA, it's like I don't need to ask you how to be Ricky. Yeah. At any given moment, notice you can be Ricky. Yeah. So the same thing applies to whatever character you choose to to um, you know jump into the skin of that character. 
I shouldn't have to ask you who that character is once you've done your homework, once yeah. you found, you know, the nugget, the gem of that. Yeah. Um, and my good buddy Darnell, uh, shout out uh, DK Darnell Kirkwood solo. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Darnell. Oh, you know Darnell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, you know everybody. You, know, yeah. Listen, Ricky be outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but my man, my man know everybody. So shout out Darnell. Yeah. Uh, he he would always say this when we worked on YouTube videos. I'm not even aware of some of the things I do at this point. Um, but he would say, you know, I, I have a, a knack for taking my moment before uh, the scene. And and I truly do believe in that because I think in mm-hmm. order, you know. Say what you will, we shoot out of order, especially when we're doing films and television or whatnot. But that script is kind of your guide. That's your your linear way of tracking your character's progression. Yeah. Um, And so for me, you know, I like to know where did we just come from and Mm -hmm. where are we going? Yeah. You know, what what's the overall character arc? Yeah. So, yeah, before we jump into a scene, you know, we're not just dropping in cold. Yeah. You came from somewhere. You drove over here. You yeah. know, I was doing an activity before then. We set up. We sit down here to have the interview yeah. to where if we cut right here in the mm-hmm. middle of the scene, well, there's a whole life that happened before that. Yep. You know, and, and so I do, I'm thankful for Darnell for bringing this up to me, but I do love to take the moment and just be like, okay, what led me to this moment here? So by the time we drop into the scene, I'm yeah. already physically there. My energy is there. You mm-hmm. know, if it's if it's something where I'm supposed to be uh, tensed up, or yeah. or you know, this is this is painful for me, or maybe it's even emotionally triggering for me. Yeah. You know, I need to put that in my body and feel that first. So by the time we say in action, you can gracefully already, just transition there. Guide right. Yeah. Guide yourself right into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Moment, moment before and moment after. Those, are, those are real key for actors, like in scene and even in auditions. Well, like the moment after, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but well, I mean, you know, it, it depends on what what scene we're doing. Yeah. Um, like the button of the scene, like when you're when you're when you're in audition when you're in an audition, sure. you want to especially if you don't have like the last line or something like that, you want to throw like a little sauce on it. No, oh, you don't you don't you don't throw some sauce on it. It depends, man. <laughs> it it, it depends. It depends honestly what the content is. Okay. Um, because the problem with a bun is everybody feels the need to do more than they need to. Mm. Sometimes the scene doesn't require all that. Yeah. Sometimes it just requires you being present. Mm. You know what I mean? So you you get uh, especially this happens in comedy all the time where everybody's trying to one up each other. Yeah, oh, yeah, punchline, yeah. punchline, punchline, punchline. Yeah. Scene ends. Yeah, and, and give me my shit. <laughs> we didn't need all that, you know. Like you, you didn't need that yeah. button at the end. Um, but you need to have that awareness of where to place it, when to place it. It's also just knowing the, to the mechanics of what we're what we're working in. Mm. And now that I'm behind the camera, and now that I'm you know doing more directing, and we're just kind of uh, being more mindful of our performances. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I was leaving on the thought of like. You have to understand what you're doing within the craft. Mm. Um, film, television, especially when there's a camera involved, is very much the director's medium. Mm. It's not no, so much an actor's medium. You know, mm. so uh, theater would be the actor's medium. Mm. That's all in the actor's hands. Yeah. The director can, can, you know, get the best performances out of you in rehearsal, yeah. and they can tell you what to do. But once you're on that stage, there is no control. Nothing. They can't come in and be like, actually. No, 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 no. It is for the actor. Exactly. Whereas, you know, the director uh, uh, can craft and mold and curate, you know, whatever experience. Because, again, we're, we're making something bigger, a much bigger entity that is to be sold and to be lived and. You know, it's crystallized within this product of like a film or a television. Yeah. And I say all that to say, like, sometimes you don't need the moment after. Sometimes Mm -hmm. just being present is all you need. Um, I actually prefer an actor who doesn't need to say or do anything. But when we cut, I just still want to see you in the moment. Mm. I don't want you to break and be like man, I'm going to kill you next time I see you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's for, what's for lunch, man? Yo, you like that take? No, because no. to me that, that you know, call it what you will, but that doesn't really feel like that you were that present in the scene. Mm. Give it a second, even if it's like 30 seconds to a yeah. minute. Walk away from it. Remain in the character. You know what I mean? Like, man, yeah. like, there are talented people who can do it. Yeah. I'm not saying this is a hard, fast rule. 
But for me, especially when it comes to uh, scenes that demand more from me, mm -hmm. I'm not bouncing back that quick. Because yeah. if I am, did I ever really believe it in the first place? Mm. That's a good one. Was I truly ever there? Yeah. And then if I've allowed you to believe that, well, now I'm just lying. Yeah. yeah. And I would rather be a great performer than a great liar. Yeah. That's a good one. Like, what do you think separates you? I mean, you, you, you spoke on your work ethic and stuff like that, but like, how were you able to transition from being a child actor to a working adult actor? Because not that many child actors make it out. Once they hit puberty or whatnot, they're, they're, they're done. Mm -hmm. But you're still in it, and now you're even behind the camera now. So how, what do you think, what do you attribute that to, like, your success now? Half of the battle is honestly just waking up every single day and still doing it. Mm. I think, and, and, you know, we could share the same stories, uh, you know, the same testament to this is, like, a lot of, peers that we had fell off just because they simply gave up yeah you know especially when you're transitioning like you said uh from childhood to adulthood it, different things start to get in the way you yeah. know girls mm -hmm. life yep. college you know you certain uh demands uh start to take hold certain uh distractions start to look alluring to yeah. you so a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do these corny ass auditions where yeah. everybody, they ask me to come in. Like, why they got to do all that? Like, don't they know it's me? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is ego. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and again, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm picture perfect to that. I've mm -hmm. definitely struggled with my own ego um, mm -hmm. as well at times. Okay. Um, and it happens. You know, it, 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 it's a part of the process. That's how you really know... Uh, how much of a privilege this is. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, how would you say? I truly do believe that everybody goes through different phases of humbling periods. Um, and so just as you have beginner's luck, yeah. you're going to have that fall. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this industry, just like life, is hills and valleys. Yeah, 100%. So, yep. you know, uh, I had a great string uh, of one after another, after another, after another as a child. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that. And then once I got into my early 20s, those were those awkward development years where mm. you're not quite a boy, not quite a man yet. And yeah. I'm still looking young. So even at the age of 32, I'm not quite the the, the leading man, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. whatever they want to call it. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things where you, you got to stay fresh. Mm. Uh, so in those, in, in those years, I always just kept myself busy and I had different skill sets. And I attribute that to, again, the mentors that I was able to work with, yeah. uh, like a Denzel, like a Werner Herzog, like a Gavin O'Connor, who sort of seen the young curiosity within me to be a director. As soon as I got out of high school, really? um, I wanted to transition into film school, but then I dropped out of school completely. What film school were you at? So I went to Santa Monica College because I was just okay, going to do see. some, I was just going to do some, uh, get my general eds out of the way and then transition into the USC film program. Yeah. Um, but I dropped out as soon as I got it within my first year because my truancy record was out the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and that was because I was doing two films at the time while trying to maintain going to school. Oh, yeah, uh, so wow. it was becoming an issue. Yeah. And once I talked to a couple of directors, they were like, you've been in the business since a child. Pick up a camera. Start shooting. You do by doing. Now, don't get me you wrong. You do by doing. Yeah, you do by doing. And don't get me wrong. Like Denzel really wanted me to to, to go to school, um, you know, and he was he was willing to support me. Uh, yeah. Just you know, recommendations, whatever it may be, of yeah. that nature. Uh, but it was one of those things where I felt like, yeah, let me just pick up a camera. So, shortly after high school, maybe a year after me and my buddy, we just hit the road. We started touring around with a rock band, just hopping in the back. Uh, sleeping on the floorboard, moving around, you what? know what I mean? Just filming BTS. Yeah. Um, same thing I did with my buddy Carlito. Shout out Carlito Olivero. Uh, I went on tour with him and his family. I would just shoot all of his BTS content. I would edit that up. Uh, I worked five years as an editor over at Cartoon Network oh, shit. Uh, due to a good friend of mine, Carl Jones. I told him I edited. He was like, oh, man, come hang out on the Boondock set. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm cutting in the lab and I'm working for Cartoon Network. I worked on Ben 10, <laughs> Black Dynamite. Uh, I worked on uh, Freak Nick the Musical with all of your favorite rappers. Um, Damn. Yeah, so that, that was fun. And a little bit on Boondocks as well. Uh, oh, classic. And then even then, like I met uh, a good buddy of mine named Dustin mm -hmm. uh, and he happened to be one of Miguel's photographers. 
uh, and he just kind of taught me fashion photography as well. So I spent three years just picking up a camera, getting out every single day and going to shoot. So I always kept myself uh, proactive behind the scenes, even when I wasn't booking as much in front of the camera. Mm. And things get slow, of course. And, yeah. You know, the new blood comes in. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you know, uh, the friends that you knew are no longer your peers. And now, you know, there's competition. Yeah. And, you know, somebody might be ready for that role. It's everything is is within God's timing. That might be their time to take off. Mm -hmm. This might be my development time. Mm -hmm. I found that there was no wasted time for me, even though it seemed like I wasn't uh, in front of the camera all the time. There was yeah. no waste of time because all of those skills that I were developing led to me being behind the camera now. Yeah. Um, and I'm finding those skills still being handy with the development of 5150 or any of my other projects. Yeah. You know, uh, graphic design, photography, editing, writing. Yeah. You know, these are all uh, gifts that I was sort of, you know, fostering and maintaining as I wasn't booking jobs as an actor. So, no, there's there's no easy roadmap or transition and none of this makes sense. Yeah. And I can't tell you like, oh, man, you're going to you're going to thug it out for five years. And then all of a sudden you'll get a Black Panther, too. No, because this is even happenstance. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's it's all God. I, yeah. I, I could tell you there's control over this and I could tell you there's a bit of luck. Uh, but it's all preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Preparation meets opportunity, and like you said, you you were building, you know, skills and and hobbies and stuff outside of acting. Like absolutely, and that's very important for you know actors out there who are on the journey. I feel like you you need to separate yourself from acting in some way. You have to find other hobbies and skill sets outside to keep you. Going when this those slow those slow month those slow years or slow months or whatever when you're not booking or you're not getting auditions or anything like that you need something to tap into to keep you you know going and creatively thriving even if it's not hobbies it's it's a uh, never forget that we um, we tell stories of empathy for a living mm -hmm. we embody characters who are for better or for worse, fictionalized versions of people we actually know mm. or have seen yeah. or experienced. Um, and even if you don't know that person personally, like I hope you don't know a serial killer, but <laughs> you know, you, you, you can watch and you can learn and you can understand human habits and behavior traits. And yeah. you know, from that, from your lived experience based upon, you know, what you know are like emotional triggers for you. And then you can learn about this character and learn maybe the psyche of why somebody felt motivated or pushed to do that. And then you, you put that together and you stir it in the pot and then you make this amalgamation of whatever that character is. Yeah. That's all from lived experience. Yeah. Lived so, experiences. you know, sometimes, no, it's not always being the, the multi hyphenate, mm. you know, maybe your one gift is acting. Mm. And I encourage everybody to be a hyphenate, but let's just say like you and your heart of hearts feel like acting is everything and you, you have zero interest in anything else. Yeah. Just get out and continue to, to, to live. Um, I read Matthew McConaughey's book, uh, Greenlight. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey's Real book. Good. Great book. Real great. Book. Um, the, the section where he talks about, you know, uh, after he experienced success on Days and Confused, and mm -hmm. then he packed up his bags and came out to LA and thought everything was just going to be booming. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he meets one of those producers and knocks on his door and, you know, he's like crash on my couch. Well, he starts crashing on homie's couch for a minute. Yeah. And the producer turns to him and says, Matthew, go out and live. Mm hmm. And that's he, exactly he went he went like over like yeah, Europe he went to, he went went to yeah. Europe, yep. you know, rented rented some motorcycles, crashed one of them, yep, you know yep, what I mean? Yep, uh, crazy story. Just traveled all around Europe and whatnot, and then he came back with this lived experience. Lived experience. And it and it enriched his characters. Yeah. And you never know if that was the gateway to you opening up what could be your next character. Because what I found yeah. with any character that I've ever portrayed on screen. This is where preparation meets opportunity. Sometimes I had to go through certain things within my own personal life to then put that character on screen the same way a musician says I had to go through this journey to put that on wax. Mm. I had to sometimes live something to put that truth on screen yeah. so then I could embody that character so then that product can come out and then someone could look at me and be like, yo, man. I didn't think anybody felt that way or I didn't think anybody was going through the same things I was going through. Wow, like, thank yeah. you for playing that character. Yeah. And again, that's, that's not the doing of me. That is my mission or calling. That's, yeah. 
God using me for whatever yeah. you know reason you know I need to be called to do. So but you need yeah you need yeah. that lived in experience because you wouldn't be ready for that role. No, no. So past but that, that's just me getting out of my own way. He spoke on that too, like uh, Matthew McConaughey in mm -hmm. his book, like because you said not everybody can be a multi hyphenate. Um, sure. He's I think he's yeah he spoke on like because he was doing so many things at one point. I think he may have had might have had I think it was like a production company. He was doing so many different things. And he wasn't really getting nowhere. He was like, man, I need to hone in on, like, these two to three things instead of spreading myself so thin. Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like, yeah, because some people may be trying to do so much. And how about you just focus on what you're really good at or really great at, and you're going to see way better success with that and then spreading yourself all over because you're not going to be able to put a good amount of your energy into 15 things. That was that was around the time where he was basically describing like being swept up in the life because mm -hmm. by that time he had experienced you know more success within his career he was in demand in hollywood mm -hmm. people were throwing scripts at him all the time yeah um but there is something interesting that you just brought up because my dad asked me this all the time my dad says like uh you know he'll call me sometimes and be like hey denzel you're so great at um the different things that you do yeah you know and very kind he's like why don't you just go get an editing job or so, so you're writing right now. Does that mean you're giving up on acting? Mm. Or, or so, so is directing really it? Mm. You know, um, and for me, I do think you could do it all. Yeah. I think uh, he doesn't know he's my mentor, but my mentor, Kanye West. <laughs> I, watch, I watch him from afar. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't know he's my mentor <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, I think, I think he's, he's, uh, he's someone who's kind of a, a living, walking example of that, that there's no box you can really put an artist in. Oh no! If an if an artist feels in calling, go with the calling. Yeah. But you know, to the point that you raised is like, yeah, you might be doing fifteen things at once. Mm -hmm. What is your heart calling you to do now? Mm -hmm. And you can do yes, two things really, really great at that moment. Yeah. But the skill sets that surround that mm -hmm. can help and inform the way that you do these two things very well. Exactly. So it's it's not a problem of just being diverse. It's a problem of being focused. And saying like, hey, I got these things on the board. Mm -hmm. What's the lowest hanging fruit? Or where is my passion calling me right now? Yeah. Where can I uh, uh, divert all of my attention to where if I knock out this one of the 15 things, then all these 15 things might, you know, it might be a chain reaction from yep. then on. Domino effect. And I think it, it, it's more so about just structuring uh, mm. uh, and giving yourself a roadmap. Mm. And that's where like goal setting or vision boarding yeah, or exactly. that, you know, just... Uh, writing in a planner daily you yeah. know what i mean that that's where those uh uh how would you say uh skills would they even be skills daily habits yeah <laughs> that's where those daily habits uh, uh come in handy you yeah know? yeah yeah black panther yes oh how? wow we, we jumped like two three <laughs> questions we, yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> i'm like no yeah. I mean, i'm like man i don't yeah. know how to, i don't know how to do this this, this is definitely this is gonna be hard but how did that come about like how do you how does Black Panther? How did you get in Black Panther? Because that's not like a. I don't feel like that's like some shit that just everybody's going out for. Like I don't think that's like okay, Aquas Access, you can go out for Black. I Panther. don't like, know. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, I don't know. Um, still to this day, I I, I don't really know how that happened. Really. But, I do. I, I do, and I don't. Like you auditioned for it, or did you get? No, 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 I did, I did, I okay. did. I, trust me, <laughs> there, there was opportunity for everybody. Yeah. When a role is yours, a role is yours. Mm -hmm. Um. And I and I say that you know very very thankfully like, I couldn't call this the same way I couldn't call any of the other roles that I was in. Yeah. Um. Let me kind of walk you through the story for a bit. I remember. Uh, I remember this specifically because there was a good friend of mine. Uh, we were working on a music video project at the time. Um, and I remember like we, we were supposed to have an outing that night or whatever. And, you know, when the agents always send something, it's always when you have a thousand different things to do. Right. Yep. It's always when you like made it, plans, yeah, yeah, you know, everything. you're supposed to be doing stuff with friends or whatever. <laughs> like, and then all of here a sudden, it is. here's the audition. <laughs> oh, pages. I'm like, okay. So, so I see the audition, it had a code name for it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is cool. And then I start reading the material. I'm like, is this a Marvel project? But it's only two pages. It's only two pages. What? I forgot how I found out. I think maybe uh, my agents had, had, you know, had some information ahead of time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. 
And so, you know, I called my homegirl up and I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I know we were supposed to do such and such. And I told her and she was like, no, go do that. It's cool. So that's what I did. I, I, I went to just study the lines. Yeah. Uh, I went to, to one of my good friends um, casting, Amber Bickham. Shout out Amber Nache. Amber Bickham. Um, we worked together on the um, on the character that night. And then I woke up the next day and I just went to the audition. Um, and that was over at Sarah Finn's office. And I remember yeah, going in, yeah. you know, doing doing my audition. Felt really strong about the material that I was putting forth. Mm -hmm. And then I remember they asked me afterwards, they asked me, uh, hey, so Ryan Cooler is going to be viewing all of these tapes. You know, is there anything that you would love to say to Ryan? And this is me coming off of just directing um, this little short film narrative piece that I had just put together. Mm -hmm. So I was really in director brain more so than actor brain. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't believe I was so astonished after watching Creed at the time. Going in, not necessarily knowing that Ryan Coogler directing that or Fruitville Station, not being familiar with his work beforehand yeah. and coming out just being blown away that that young black man like himself yeah. who represents the culture and who stands in the culture so yeah. well was able to put something uh, of that magnitude on screen. Um, and you could just tell he's a student of film. Yeah. And so when she asked me, was, it, was there anything I wanted to say to Ryan, I just, I let, again, it was one of those moments where I blacked out and I just poured my heart out and I, you know, just told him the admiration that I had for him. Yeah. And that was it. So that happened around maybe like August, I want to say August, September. Uh-huh. Didn't hear anything back. So as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. when you don't hear anything, you're like, ah, yeah, I must have yeah. didn't get it. Didn't get it. On, on to the next. So next thing I know, I'm chopping it up over in my living room. I have my buddies over and we're putting together this script because it was something else that we were developing at the time. And yeah. I remember my agents calling me. And I said, what's my agent calling me for? Yeah. So when my agent calls me and you know, when all the yeah. agents are on the phone, it's like, well, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. something happened. They're like, hey, I got the team right. on. It's like, oh. Right, right exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm either getting fired or I just got hired <laughs> when the team's on. So the whole team is on, and they're like, hey, uh, so, so what's the top of your year looking like? I'm like, I mean, you guys know. Nothing. Huh. They're like, oh, okay, cool. So um, after Christmas, would you love to go do a Marvel film? Shut up. Yeah. Mind you, they call me in December, right? What? After Christmas, would you love to go do a Marvel film? I'm like, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, so you, you remember when you went out for the Black Panther project? Yeah, we've been tracking it this whole time. We just didn't want to let you know to get you too overhyped and to get your hopes up. But, uh, yeah, Ryan wants to have you in Black Panther. Uh, please, you know, they're excited to have you come down. You'll, you'll go do a week's of shooting in Atlanta, and you got the job. <laughs> so so that was my christmas present the, yeah, yeah. Um, merry christmas for man, real what a merry christmas but here's what? here's where it gets interesting though right because you know i went down and, and shot for a week and again that, yeah. mind you this is only two pages of material what? i shot and, they, and they, i can't even believe they called you like what august september october november they called you in they called you in december they called me in december bro like four and, months, almost four and, months. And, and filming started i believe in january that's what i mean so i, I it was already out of my head it was already out of my head. Wow. So then we start filming in what I think it was January. And again, I don't have the full script. Yeah. So I don't know where my character fits into, you know, the story of Black Panther. I, I, I don't even know how my character is involved. All I know is I'm doing a scene with Sterling K. Brown and the Tondo Akani. And that's it. What? So I don't know if my scene's getting cut or not. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was extremely <laughs> nervous, not only to share the news because I had an NDA clause, but even up until the premiere, yeah. you know, there was no PR. I didn't do anything because I didn't know how yeah. integral I was yeah. as a character. So wow. I'm sitting at the premiere and I'm watching this blown away. And, and I kid you not, like I was brought to tears, not not because of my performance, but I was brought to tears because I got to be a part of something that's special. Man. Um, this representative of the culture, the like culture, man. what Ryan and the team was able to put forth and allowing, yeah. I'll say this much, thankful to Marvel for allowing him to put that depiction on screen. Yeah. Um, and, and how it just changed the perception of what we can be, yeah. how young boys and girls were able to look in themselves as royalty. Yeah. Like I cried at the theater when I seen it at the premiere and I couldn't believe it. And I didn't know if my scenes was going to get cut or whatnot. I'm in the beginning of the film. Not only that, they split my two scenes up into two different scenes. Yeah. So now I'm in the middle of the movie and I walk out of there feeling like, hey. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but that, that was my experience. Man. I'm, 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 I'm grateful for it. Yeah, man. That was just so 
like you said, it's monumental for the culture, man. Like Absolutely. everybody showed out and drove to go see that, man. Like I had a dashiki on and everything. <laughs> like I went and got a dashiki to go see it. Like what? Like I was like, yo, this oh, is crazy. Oh my so it's god! Like, like it's it's iconic, man. Um, dog. So yeah, I mean, whew. so so I'm, just stop right there. Do how what what gems could you give like? an actor wanting to pursue this you know this this career like to all the aspiring because that's what this podcast is is about you know giving giving game it's about giving the game back to like the aspiring artists who you know usually don't have this information accessible to them and they don't know where to start they don't know how to do like should i take an acting class or what should i you know how should i put my first foot forward in this business like what what would you say to them like there's no there's no roadmap to this. Mm. I could give you all the advice in the world. Yeah. But what's made for you and, and, and what's gonna be yours is gonna be yours. Yeah. Um again, when preparation meets opportunity, I'll never forget that. The first time I heard it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do a shameless name drop. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is uh I just finished abduction, um, okay. and we were chilling at what used to be uh, Dreas, if you remember when it was in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're on the rooftop, and so <laughs> I don't know why this was the, the weirdest night. Mel Gibson and Quincy Jones decides to join us. What? <laughs> there's kind of a reason why this makes sense, and there's kind of not a reason. Why this makes sense. <laughs> there, there was some family relation there. What? So anyway, uh, Mel Gibson and Quincy Jones joins us that night. And I remember sitting next to Quincy. And I'm just asking him very much the same thing, like how you get started and, you know, the, and how you've been able to, you know, sustain thus far. Yeah. And he puts his arm around my shoulder and he drags me and he's like, listen up. Never forget this. You will get what you want when preparation meets opportunity. Some people call it luck. Some people call it destiny. That's how you get the opportunity. Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Preparation, <sighs> preparation meets Jones opportunity. Um, so for me, man, I, look, again, it, it's about the discipline. It's about the work ethic. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, uh, you know, many people ask me the same question, like, oh, man, you dropped out of, you know, school. Do you ever regret it? No, mm -hmm. because education is what you make it. Yeah. If you choose to seek the knowledge, just like you and I, we're, we're also filmmakers behind the scenes as yeah. well. You have to go and research that. Whether you ask people yep. that you work with yep. or you have to get online and start doing YouTube University, you have to be a, a student. Yeah. You always have to be a student of life. Yes. And it's the same thing with your craft of acting. It's the same thing with anything that you want to start. Mm -hmm. Start to learn what the environment is. Start to learn what the what the tools of the trade are. Yeah. You know, Start to learn who are the key players. Yeah. Uh, do as much research as possible. You know, if you do want to be an actor, you got to put in those hours. You got to put in that 10,000 hours. Yep. And even more so, you're going to put in, you know, more than 10,000 hours. Yeah. Uh, no entrepreneur on this earth will tell you that sometimes you're going to get less sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have early mornings and late nights. Mm -hmm. Some days there's going to be tasks that you're going to have to, that are demanded of you that you're not going to want to do. Yeah. Uh, other friends are going to be out celebrating. Sometimes you got to isolate yourself and be alone. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when, the, when something's on your heart, you have to dedicate everything your entire life force That's to facts. making it happen um so the advice that i would give anybody who really wants to try acting is you have to have to have to continuously just put in the hours and never give up mm -hmm. you know you got to be tenacious you got to be um, um resilient mm -hmm. um wanting this needing this craving this feeling like that's within you yeah. because it's one thing for you to just wish for something right yeah but if you truly desire it and it's on your heart and you, and you send out a prayer to God, and you're like, God, I really want this to happen. Well, faith without works is dead. Yep. That's what they True. always say, right? That's facts, man. So if you truly, truly pray to God, and you know this is something that's implanted within you, and you feel it on your spirit, well, then it's only up to you to fail. Yeah. God will make a way, and it may seem like, you know, nothing's really happening, nothing's really clicking, or no doors are opening. Yeah. God will make a way, yeah. but sometimes life has to happen. Sometimes you need to learn something. Sometimes people got to get out of your life. Mm. Sometimes a whole bunch of things have to clear. There's all this shit that has to work behind the scenes yep. just for you to get to that moment. Yeah. But you have to be resilient and keep going, yeah. whether that's your, your first big job or whether that's the next big job. I mean, 
you know, I, I would I would give credit to one of my friends who got started later in the game. He got started when we were probably like 24, 25. He wanted to start his acting career. Mm -hmm. um, and all up until maybe the last two years, so that's anywhere between five, seven years that yeah. he's been, you know, trying, 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 trying for a manager, trying for an agent. He finally got his first job. Wow. And even though it was, it was a small co-star, you know, he maybe had one, two lines. Yeah. Less than a year later, on his birthday, he gets his next big job. What? And now he's on an HBO series. And again, it's a co-star, but, you know, from five years of nothing to seven years of now you got two jobs. Yep. That's what and you got. And then you just keep endurance. going. endurance. Honestly, the longer you stay in this game of acting, yeah. you'll start to realize that people don't necessarily have the the, uh, the 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 willpower and the discipline to keep going like you do. Yeah. So, you know, as we get older, yeah, you start to get all new fresh faces and people jumping in at all different ages. But to be honest with you, this is this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. marathon. That's facts. so you could that be doing so this for the rest of your life. You could be 80 and still booking jobs. Yeah. Like we imitate real life. There's no shelf life for an actor. No, there's because no because we. There's it's no shelf baby. life for a person. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is, but you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, but no, no, no. So we imitate life. So so as long as you are there, and yeah. again, preparation meets opportunity. And and let me let me draw it in a very simple example, right? Mm -hmm. Say for so you get to the age of sixty. Yeah. Um, and you think like, oh man, I'm too old. But I've did all the work, you know. I've trained. I've I I know what it is to portray this character. I have a grandchild that uh. You know, she's starting school or whatever, or blah, blah, blah. You have all this living in life experience. Yeah. And now all of a sudden there's a character that's learning how to deal with their grandchild. Mm. And now, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're 60 or whatnot. And there's only maybe like five or 10 of you guys yeah. around who, who could really like play this part. Yeah. Well, now you're one of the five. So all you got to do is show up and show deliver up. the lines. And that's what it is of preparation meets opportunity. opportunity. If you just wait it out. Chances are it's going it's to gonna happen. happen. It's going to happen. You just got to stay the course, y'all. You got to stay the course. Yeah. Hey, man, I just saw some cameras go out, so we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about you behind the scenes. All right. This commercial is brought to you by Newport Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty-one fifty, man. Let's 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 talk about that, man. Sure. Let's talk about you, like. How did you? I mean, you you started to take you know pick up the camera and start when you saying you was going you know, with the bands and sleeping on the floor and stuff. So you was already behind the camera then. But like eighteen, nineteen around that time, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, what made you to just like all right? I want to do you know some real narrative and really like start to write and all of that. Like, how did you catch that bug and what made you? Oof. Getting that lane. That's a journey. I need to stop saying this because I have a gift mm -hmm. and it would be wrong of me to not honor the gift. Hmm. I kind of don't like writing. Oh, uh, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, 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 yeah. You know, I, it's, it's it, 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 what it is is, is uh, writing for me is a labor of love like editing hmm. um, because it, it, it takes so much. Yes. Um, and that's not to say that I'm not grateful for the gift. Yeah. Here's what it is. Because when I, when I write very similarly to like when I edit, I have to basically tune out the world. Mm. Because I need to live within these characters. Mm -hmm. I need to live within their thoughts. I need to uh, play each and every one of them within my head. Yep. Um, I need isolation yeah. um, when I'm writing. So that for me is kind of like when I go in the deep end. And as you know, a lot of people have uh, mentioned to me lately and probably my outward public appearance has not really been uh that forthcoming you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i've been so behind the scenes yeah crafting these characters uh because it it, it takes a lot out of you yeah, it does it really does and then once you kind of come out of your writing hole and you walk out it's like oh sunshine yeah. oh, people man. like yeah <laughs> i got that to be a human um but 5150 came about how would i say i got my start in music videos um before 5150, I've probably done, let's see, one, two, three, four, about five short films before 5150. Okay. Um, a well, few. You, you've, you've acted in or? or you directed. Directed, yeah, not, yeah. not written. You didn't uh, write. I, wrote, you wrote. I wrote them, but loosely wrote them. You okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I wrote them, and then I was producing for other people, okay. uh, developing their projects as well. And I'm, I'm going through the music video circuit, and it's very much like the advertisement space. Uh, space where as a director you're basically pitching mm -hmm. you're pitching ideas yeah and uh, i got so frustrated 
by continuously pitching, pitching, pitching for these artists that say they want to do something creative and out of the box. Yeah. And then it just ends up becoming rapper shot number five standing yeah. in front of the Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, glamour shot number 10. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's you know, it, it, it was so, how would you say, methodical to the approach of making music videos. And there's only very few people who are willing to step outside of that box. Yeah. Sometimes that literally comes from the own internal management and house decisions. And, yeah. you know, they'll just hire like the homie who's like a really great filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. sometimes, you know, management might want to roll the dice. But oftentimes, you know, they're thinking of metrics. They're thinking of what's going to sell. Yeah. And I can't blame them for that. It's the same thing with the television structure. It's the same thing for anybody who's going to be a buyer of a studio. They got to think about how does this make sense? How does this translate to an audience? That yeah. is the job of the suits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Suits, man. So, so I can't blame them. But I really was frustrated with that process in music videos. Okay. Because I had the privilege of working with my buddies like Carlito, working with people like Maestro, mm -hmm. uh, working with uh, my buddy like Colt. Friends who I admired their artistry, but also we wanted to do something off the cuff. Whether it's we wanted to do something Wes Anderson style or very Tarantino, or yeah. whether we wanted to do like a cool concept. I was taking budgets of three, four thousand dollars, and I was making those stretch. But in the music video world, I was getting like ten to fifteen thousand dollar budgets, maybe twenty thousand dollar budgets, mm. and we only get two locations, and yeah. you got to hire all these people, yeah. and then people <laughs> got to get this cut and that cut. Yeah. And so once you look at the budget, you walk away like, well, where'd the money go? Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't fulfilling for me. Yeah. Um, and I would always pitch narrative. I'd always pitch like, let's do a story. Let's do something that's really involved. Mm. Let's do something creative. Because a, a good producer buddy of mine told me a long time ago, if you're going to get into this this uh, world of music videos and advertisement, yeah. make sure every time you walk away with something to put on your reel. If you really want to do, if you really want to be like a narrative filmmaker, yeah. Make sure you always have a nugget that you can showcase within your reel that really shows like where you want to move to. Mm. Um, and I wasn't getting the jobs that I felt were representative of what I wanted to do. So 5150 was one of those where it was like, OK, well, how can we create a self-contained story? Yeah. Something very, very small. Maybe we'll just shoot it in my studio out back. Yeah. Um, and it just meant to live in one space. Yeah. And that was the real core of 5150 that started. Wow. In 2017, after I was helping my buddy uh, Kofi do his project Jump, I came back. Kofi. So, Kofi yeah, has, shout uh, it. Uh, Kofi Sir, Sirwa. Sirwa, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. So, so uh, you know, we I helped him produce that project. Um, and I came back just so inspired of what we could do creatively, just indie filmmakers. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, you know, I wanted a piece of that for myself. Nice. So I got started with that 2017, started shopping around 5150. I wrote it over Christmas break. Um, and then I started putting it on producer's desk, after producer's desk, after producer's desk, and people just, they weren't, you know, for whatever reason, responding to it. They, yeah. you know, they said, oh, this is great. I really love it, blah, blah, blah. I don't, don't want to help you do it. You to know, the script, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, 2018 rolls around. I'm, I'm starring in this project called Will the Machine. I was acting in it. Okay. A uh, project I executive produced as well. And so uh, I met my, uh, who's now my producer and co-writer, John Trefi, on that project. Okay. And he was producing uh, Will the Machine. So we clicked up. I put the script in front of him. Um, and at the same time, again, it's I like to think that everything that is destined for you the same way, like with relationships. Yeah. You meet your, you know, romantic counterpart because this is how you are uh, at this stage of your life. This is how you feel. This is, you know, what you're looking for. And similarly, that might be what they're attracting and looking for as mm -hmm. well. And that's how you meet people. Yeah. And the same thing goes for like, you know, business yeah. relationships. Yeah. Uh, you know, John was looking to move more into narrative from branded content. I myself was looking to move into narrative as well. Mm -hmm. And so 5150 felt like the, the, the perfect launching platform for both of us. Wow. Um, and we started that in 2018, kept developing it. Um, and then the pandemic rolled around around 2020. And so when the world shut down and yeah. money got tight, we, for some reason, had the courageous idea of, hey, let's start a Kickstarter. What? Let's uh, call up David because he's at home. <laughs> David Oyelowo, who said, you know, he would be interested in the project. So I called up David. What? Uh, we got him on the phone. David was down to executive produce. Okay. The next thing I was like, you know what? I don't know who's going to play celeb. You know, there were a couple different options that we were cycling through. And then Javon came up and Javon was at home. And I had met Javon in passing uh, before as well. And uh -huh. so I called him like, yo, Jay, you know, hey, I got this wonderful project, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We'd love to be a part of it. Yeah. And from then on, 2020, we decided to start a Kickstarter. We raised, 
thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars, which which overshot our benchmark. I think we were only reaching for like uh, twenty-five thousand or thirty thousand. We overshot our benchmark, what? and then we raised some more funds uh, privately. And again, by the grace of God, we were we were off to the race. Y'all was off to the races. Off to the races. But we you were, spoke on something. You you said something. I feel like it was really key when, especially for like independent filmmakers, you're reaching out to friends. Like, were you calling? Fa- I feel like you you would have to call favors. A lot of oh my god, for this. yeah. Listen, uh, especially in the world of indie filmmaking, yeah. and, and when it comes down to short films, short films notoriously don't make money. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're not um, products of seeing a financial ROI, mm. return on investment. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, not at all. So, so uh, you have to call in favors because you want to keep that cost low. Yeah, you know, you really, really have to be economical in your approach to making a short film. Yeah, um, and oftentimes that comes from calling up friends, calling up favors. You know what I mean. And there's certain stipulations that you can't get around, like uh, SAG, for instance, was yeah. one of those. Um, we were one of the first SAG projects uh, to get clearance during the pandemic. It was like our project and Michael Bay's ambulance at the time. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So damn, yeah, because COVID was, you know, yeah, COVID, yeah, COVID was still, you know, the scary yeah. thing that it was at the time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But but like like you said, you reached out to, you know, people you you knew. That would be down to you know, work like and I and I and I, f- I feel like as far as like reaching out for like you know relationships and 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 calling in favors to do certain things like this, especially for indie filmmakers, um, the grandfather of independent films, uh, Robert Townsend. Mm-hmm. I remember I went to go see him in one man in his one man show in um, at UC Berkeley, and he said, "You want to work? You want to work uh, uh, horizontally, not vertically." Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yep. that 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 hit. He was like, he's like, yeah, you don't want because everybody wants to be like, oh man, you know who I want to put in this? I want to put, you know, Will Smith or somebody, whoever is like a name. Sure. But I don't know that person, but I know a lot of other talented people. Like work with your people. You know, you know a camera guy. You know another actor. You know somebody who has like a camera camera equipment or whatever. So work, you know, like that instead of trying to reach for these these people that you don't know when you're starting up yes and no okay so hey elaborate elaborate no 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 no, 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 no. i you know i i want to give credit where credit's due yeah robert townsend is absolutely right yeah um and i think that mindset um i think that mindset is important for empowering somebody who feels like well i don't have these resources what do i do Mm -hmm. horizontally yes is your best friend Uh, a lot of actors ask all the time like Nobody's hiring me for material, you know, how do I get more things for my reel so I can get an agent? Yeah. Yes, work horizontally, like go find, uh, you know, student filmmakers who are creating their thesis statements. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That way you can uh, get within their short film project, really do, you know, some compelling work. They have a lot to lose just like you have a lot to lose. Yeah. That's how you could, you know, work horizontally. At the same time, too, uh, 5150 is definitely a testament of horizontal and vertical at the same time. Mm. You know, uh, I'm I'm still grateful to this day that David Oyelowo, uh, you know, wanted to shepherd not only my voice but Javon's voice and sort of give us access the same way, you know, he had done so with Ava DuVernay, you yeah. know, coming into the game. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful for like Jerry Lorenzo, who at the time, crazy enough, he had posted something. He had posted a clip of me in uh, the Great Debaters um, oh, wow. during the civil unrest that was happening, yeah. and it was just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking it back because I'm thinking to myself like. You know, I love the fear of God and, and what Jerry's doing, and I think yeah. he's fantastic as a designer. So I didn't even know you were aware of me. You know, I'm. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I'm probably like one of the worst celebrities there is because I I, I take for granted, like I forget that people know me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so so Jerry <laughs> Jerry uh you know posted a clip of me and and I just happened to reach out. I was like, oh man, you know, thanks for the love, blah blah blah, and he just asked me what I was working on, and I told him the project at the time and. You know, I asked him, would you mind if we got on a phone call? And next thing you know, he's helping me, you know, giving me some tips on how to design our, our made in prison shirts for the actual film. Uh, uh, 5150. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we worked with uh, the Formosa Group, um, which they do all of Jordan Peele's projects and Get Out in Atlanta. What? And yeah. So Damn. we worked with Company 3, which is one of the best coloring companies in the game. I mean, they worked with every studio, every single studio that you can imagine. Wow. Um, our colorist, uh, Jill Bogdanovich, I kid you not, 
I was sitting watching Joker maybe the year before we even got into production of 5150, uh -huh. thinking to myself the final end scene where he's locked in Arkham Asylum and it's very like white. Um, and I'm looking at the color and I'm thinking like, oh man, I want to use that as a reference for 5150. Yeah. Little do I know, I get to work with the same colorist who colored that film and Spider-Man, which yeah. is like a favorite film of mine. So yes, you can work horizontally, but there's also a way where you could work vertically. And the way you work vertically is, is it, vertically, vertically. Vert forgive me. <laughs> um, the way you're able to achieve that though is, yeah. is not only one, your humility, but also to your passion. Uh, a lot of people responded to the passion uh, that John and I had with creating 5150. And again, I, I say this enough, and I cannot put enough credit on God. Like, you know, I, I, I don't care what you believe in out there, and I'm not here to force any uh, views or opinions on, on anybody who doesn't. Yeah. But I will say, if, if it wasn't for the grace of God, there was something moving that was beyond all of us. Mm. Because there were so many things that wasn't working with 5150 back to back to back for so many years. Yeah. The amount of times I put it on people's desks, the amount of times I shopped it around, things just weren't working. And it only took like one or, you know, one to five puzzle pieces to really click. And then everything just kept working like clockwork. And it was the right. availability of people happening at the time. It was the pandemic. It was like this perfect storm. Yeah. Even when we had a problem, that problem ended up being a blessing. A blessing in disguise, but man. If we had rushed that process too soon, yeah. it wouldn't have came out the same. If we had did the process after, mm. people might not have been available. And that's why I say everything that is meant to happen is meant to happen yeah. at the time it's meant to happen. That's fact. You can't man. rush the process. No, you can't. Um, and that's just one of the many examples that I've seen that happen within my life. Yeah. So. That's dope. 5150 was definitely one of them. And that's why I say you can work vertically as well as horizontally. horizontally yeah. Uh, just, just believe in the product and then you'll find people who genuinely believe in it. Because yeah. let me tell you, for David and Javon being a part of the project, there were plenty of my peers who I thought I had closer relationships with. Mm. And I absolutely do have closer relationships with them. Yeah. But it wasn't meant for us to work together. Damn. And they passed up on it. And there's wow. no love lost on that. Yeah. Wherever they were within their career, wherever I was in my career, yeah. I might not have been representing it to the best of the abilities. Maybe they at the time felt like, you know, they were too busy or whatnot. Yeah. Whatever it may be, it wasn't meant to happen. For them, yeah. But the but way it happened was perfect. <sighs> Jim, man. Everything happens for a reason, man. Everything and, happens. And happens the way it needs to happen. Yeah. Right, perfect timing. Man, hindsight hindsight is for sure 2020 because it don't make <laughs> yeah. sense while you're going through it. Yeah, but when you look back on it, that. even <laughs> even the most devastating, you know, tragic things that have ever happened in my life, I am grateful for. Because mm. it taught me something that I needed to learn. Yeah, it taught me, it motivated me, and moved me to to the next level that I needed to ascend to. Yeah. That's true. You man. know, as, as long as I didn't look at it like an L, you yeah. know what I mean? But I looked at it like a lesson. It's a lesson. It, took, it took me to the it took me to the next stage. Yeah. It, people that people look at tragedies and they let that become them. Mm. Fail. Fail multiple times and learn from it. Yeah. How did you get to that place? To be able to look at the world that way. Um I attribute a lot of it to, to my foundation. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'm so, so forever uh, eternally grateful to my parents, my God sister. They're, they're three very important people in my life who, who really ground me humbly yeah. um, and, and just gave me the spiritual discipline that I needed to move forward. Um, I think it's, it's killing off one's ego. Mm. And we all have an ego. Yeah. And, and we all need our ego at time to time. So I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, I've transcended or I'm holier than now or, you know, young Buddha over yeah. here. <laughs> um, but it, it's really putting one's ego to the side uh, and just having the patience, just understanding what the craft is, just just uh, understanding what your calling is, just listening to your spirit. Mm. Um, knowing that something is inside of you and, and, and moving towards that calling. Mm. Um, but I can't say it was easy for me. I think my early 20s was... Like I said, me me tricking off and, and just being a, a degenerate young man so then I could grow into the man that I needed to be now. Yeah. You have Black Mouth. Mm -hmm. That's your production company. Yes. How did that come about and what made you start it? What projects do you want to, you know, produce out of Black Mouth? Like, what is the, the goal with that production company? Huh. 
you know, Black Mouth, um, Black Mouth started back in, what was that, 2002, because oh. that was the first email that I had. It was a lovely, charming email that said 2002, but that's when I knew Black Mouth was a thing. Oh, yeah. um, that name came about when I was in sixth grade. Same thing with the logo as well, the, the hat pendant uh, yeah. that I wear. That came about uh, in sixth grade. I remember drawing it in science class. It, you know, I was drawing this little pencil shape and then put a hat on it and a little face. And then I was yeah. thinking, oh, that's, that's something. Wow. Um, and I used to you know, tag it all around the place. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Again, young degenerate kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I tag it. I mean, me and my buddy, we had a rap group. I found one of our original rap mixtapes the other day, which is funny. And, what? And we had little characters that we made. But yeah, this was always a, a cartoon character that I wanted to develop, but it stuck with me and I had no real utility purpose for it mm -hmm. um, until I formed my company. Same with Black Mouth. It was my gamer tag. It was my email. It was just like a, a moniker for me. What? Um, so when it came time to actually form my company, the first thing that came to mind was putting the two of them together. Mm. And it was just like, these are the things that are most resonant with me. Yeah. Uh, to me, I look at it like uh, what Amblin is for Steven Spielberg. Yeah. You know, Amblin doesn't necessarily have a meaning, but it's full representative of who he is. Yeah. You know, because oftentimes people ask me, well, what does is, what is black mouth mean? You know? <laughs> Especially white people, they'd be like, oh, is it, is it black mouth? It's, 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 it's motherfucker, isn't it? It's motherfucker, isn't it? No, 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 no it's, it's, it's not. Uh, black mouth uh, doesn't, you know, have a, a, a dictionary meaning to me. Hmm. But uh, if, if I had to draw one, it, it's basically our stories. You know, they always say storytelling is the earliest form, uh, earliest form of word of mouth. Yeah. So black mouth is, is the stories that I envision. Mm. Um and and it goes back to the conversation we had earlier about a childlike innocence. Yeah. Uh, drawing this in the sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, all the cartoon characters that I drew over the years. Even though I had siblings, to me, I felt like sometimes I grew up like an only child because I would lock myself in my room and it was just me, my toys, my TV, and my imagination. Wow. Um, and so a very, very early version of Black Mouth, which used to be our intro credits, um, was you know, a young black boy sitting on the floor with, again, all of his toys around him yeah. in his one room, and he was just meditating, thinking upon what life and, you know, creativity and art was going to be, and, and that was the first, wow. you know, moving picture that we had of Black Mouth, and from then, it's obviously evolved, but yeah. even if you look at the intro, um, our, our opening, you know, title card that we have now is yeah. like a, a young black boy just looking out into, like, this mystic sort of forest, and there's like this aurora borealis that's happening in front of them with palm trees yeah. and whatnot. And it's this fictional place that doesn't seem real. And that's what I want people to feel when they watch, you know, a black mouth production mm. is that it's OK. There's a there's a suspense of belief uh, or you you're able to suspend belief for just a second mm. and, and be enveloped within this world that we're looking to create. Yeah. And that could be anything from, you know. Uh, suspense thrillers like 5150 yeah. to, you know, action adventure films that I have, uh, some that are in the tuck, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to just things about, like, race and culture. Uh, because Black Mouth is such a, a punchy name as well, Yeah. Um, I think it's really important for me to show different sides of what our culture is. Yeah. Because I think there's this common mis uh, misconception that once you put black in front of something now, it has to be threatening right now it has to be so pro-black yeah yeah um, yeah and i've, so and I've never been that cat i mean you know i and talk about that because i mean i know yeah. I, I know you've you've had to you know you've experienced that in your your um your journey through this business and through your career like what black is absolutely how have you been able to like deal with like code switching or when people are looking at you and be like oh can you be blacker because they like the backhanded compliments, like, "Oh, you're, you you talk very proper," you sure. know, like shit sure, like sure, that. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, I how mean, have you been able to navigate? Look, it's it's navigating is is one thing, and I think to me it's a superpower mm. because I look at it like my parents gave me a gift, uh, gave me and my sister a gift uh, specifically where. We were raised in a in a very very diverse community, mm. and almost to the point where it's mainly majority white and Asian community. Mm. Um, so I had to learn early on how to interact with people of different cultures and races and skin color, obviously. Yeah. 
that's a superpower to me. Yeah. I don't mind being the only black person in the room. Yeah. I, I look at it like a challenge. Yeah. And I walk in there and, you know, I, I come off as non-threatening, which, again, is another superpower because I know, you know, how you think, how you move, how, mm-hmm. how you like things a certain way. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't mind being the chameleon in the room. Yeah. But you could be damn sure I'm also going to speak up for my people. And when something rubs me wrong or I feel like this is a mis- misrepresentation of us, I will be the loudest vocal you know, person in there. Love I will it. stand on that table and I will say something. Yeah. And I will either do it an eloquent way or I, I will do it a militant way. But you will damn sure you hear, hear me. me. Yep. Um, you know, so so that is like a mission for me is uh, it, there's more nuance than the stereotypes that we had talked about yeah. of being the best friend next door or being, you know, the kid from a troubled neighborhood yeah, or yeah. being, you know, thug number two. Yeah. Like I said, there's there's more nuance to that. Black kids do love anime and black kids you know, uh, love race cars and, and we love just all the things that, you know, quote unquote white kids would love. Yeah. 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 You know, there's, any different there's not just one thing. Like you yeah. want to show the whole spectrum of exactly what being we're, black is. We're, we're people. Yeah. You know, we're nerdy, we're diverse, you know, we're fun. Like I said this the other day, I'm a heterosexual male, but I'm wearing pearls. Like, cause yeah. I just think that shit is fly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, and so that's, one of the things is uh, that I want to do is continue to to knock on uh, the stereotypes and the preconceived notions of what black male should be or what mm. a black woman should be or what you know black people should be or mm. what a black community should be. Yeah, you know, I just want to continue to knock on that yeah. and to just show you. And and the best way I could do that is just by being me fully. Yeah. The more I embody and step into me, yeah. and the more and more I translate into into the. Uh, the more and more I translate that into my work of black mouth, yeah. the more and more you're going to see the diversity. Uh, diversity. So that's that's the nuance that I just want to keep bringing to the table. I love that, man. I'm going to do a double sided question to this. So, what actors would you like to share the screen with as an actor, and not like I mean, you already work with Denzel, but like not the Will Smith, not the you know the obvious like Ed Murphy. Like, who would Denzel like to share the screen with? And then I have a list. Oh, yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me a top five or top three, and then on the flip side of that, okay, let's see. who would you like to direct? Let's see. We're gonna pull up the list. Oh, you got the you got the list of the notes. <laughs> I have a list. Yeah, of course. There, there are definitely people I want to work with. There, you know. Give me, give me a second. I'll, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, it's on my computer. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. All right, listen. Um, Off the top. There is a list, but let's see who who what actors do I really want to work with? Um, <laughs> that's a fun one. <laughs> that's a fun one. I want to work with Sam Jackson. Sam, Sam was a goat. I feel like he has an entire legacy that I want to learn from. Mm-hmm. I want to work with Christian Bale. Okay. Um, so focused and just in tune with any character that he's bringing to the screen. Yeah. Same with Tom Cruise. Yeah. I feel like there's a there's a very fun intensity but intentionality behind his work mm. that I would be uh curious to learn from. Yeah. Um I would be honored to be in the presence of Meryl Streep. Oh yeah, Meryl Streep. Yeah. yeah. I would I would I would incredibly uh be honored to work with her, but very similarly I would love to learn from like Viola Davis. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And just just see She's a beast. Uh, what she brings to the table. Yeah. Um, I know you know he's not everybody's America's favorite right now, but definitely uh, me and Will Smith. Will, yeah. yeah. I mean, wanna, I'll, 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 come on. I mean, listen, I want to I want to work with Will Smith. Um, I'm trying to think of who else is on that list because there is literally like a running yeah. list, probably like. 25, 30 some odd people on that list. That what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I so wish I could pull it up you, right now. You gave you gave me the big the big dolls. Who's the up and comings? Like who's the 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 not the young guns, but maybe somebody who's not on the level of a Will Smith, who's like been but they're like a working actor, and they're like so, like for me, mine's is like I like like John Bernthal, mm-hmm. uh, John Bernthal. Um, I mean, Theo Rossi, like yeah, yeah. Daniel Kaluuya. Dan, okay, yeah. yeah, he's absolutely phenomenal in everything that he steps in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's brilliant, and I would love to work with him. Um, very similarly, like John Boyega, I also think he's brilliant. Mm, we'll John Boyega, work with him. yeah, yeah. Um, I think we would, you know, be able to share off screen some very interesting scenes. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see who's up and coming. Who's who's really fantastic right now? Hmm. Who's really, really, really fantastic? Yeah. It's a great question. <laughs> Both of them right now. I mean, uh, he, he's kind of up there. I mean, he's in superstardom or getting there. But oh. even Mike B. Like, oh, I yeah, feel Mike like B, the yeah, sensibilities yeah. Of, of of Mike B and I. I feel like we would get along. Mm. Um. Because you was in the movie, but you, I, you didn't share the screen. Well, with we didn't yet. share the screen together. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that's, you, you that's very you different really than actually. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you know, more so than than what somebody does on screen, I, I pay attention to what they do off screen. Mm. I pay attention to just how somebody moves, how they treat people. It's always like, you know, the 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 same saying of you know how you treat the the service or the help or the yeah. waiter, you know, is indicative of what your character is. Yeah. Um, and I look at a cat like Mike B or very similarly, you know, like Daniel. Um, and, and, and uh, John Boyega, and yeah. it's like, you know, what those men do off screen, I'm, I'm very much a fan of. Okay. Oh, the same with uh, Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's called. I mean, Donald the entire Glover. Atlanta cast, like. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every, everybody's yeah, yeah. brilliant down there. Yeah. Every single person is brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Atlanta, they, that's just genius, man. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got a lot of them. Yeah, damn sandwiches. Like I I, I mm-hmm. got I got I got I got a nice little list too. Yeah. Um, what about who would you like to direct? On the flip side, like, see, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I necessarily have like a, a, a prescribed list of who I would like to direct, mm-hmm. because it, it, I, I think it's an honor to to direct any of them. Yeah. Um, they always say rule of thumb with directing. I mean, you know, the best directors get it right in casting. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's half your job is getting it right in casting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me, it, it it's not so much like who would I want to direct. It's, yeah. it's who's going to be right for the project that I feel would really want to give it their all. Mm, I like you that. Know? Um, and so I just I I look forward to that, whomever it may be. Yeah. Because even you know we had a wonderful experience on fifty one fifty with like Javon for instance, yeah. um, such a powerhouse himself. Uh, and he's doing very, very well right now. I know he's got the Netflix series and, and Babylon. But even then, yeah. like, before all of this really popped off, uh, we knew it was a little bit against his type. And I knew he could mm. do it because I was a fan of his work when I went to see, um, what's that movie he did? Overlord. Oh, I didn't see that. Overlord. Yeah, it, it, it was one of those that, that kind of went off the radar and not a lot of people were, uh, you know, are familiar with his work specifically in Overlord, yeah. but he really carried that film as a leading actor. Okay. And I remember watching it in the theater and thinking to myself, like, man, I would have loved to have done that role, yeah. but he did a fantastic job. Mm. And so when I finally got the chance to work with Javon on set, again, I knew the character of Celeb was, was very much against his type. Yeah, and so as we were getting into the, into the character work, I would step in and, and we would we would go toe to toe as actors yeah, yeah, on yeah. the day of. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know what I mean? And this is stuff that was happening off screen to really push him. Yeah, to get, to get into him the in scene. there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I, so I look forward to that. And and very similarly, I mean, there's you know young actors like uh, Raquel Antonia, for instance, who she's she's very much undiscovered, but she plays Venus in Fifty One Fifty. You know, uh, that was very much. Um, how, very much an experience in itself finding who was going to play Venus. Mm. Um, specifically during the pandemic, you know, young, beautiful women yeah. uh, trying out for this role that's very nuanced because on the surface, you know, she looks like a glam superstar, uh, you know, personality. But behind that, you know, she very much loves her family. And there's mm-hmm. the secret that she's fostering for people who haven't seen the movie. Yeah. So, you know, we needed some grit. We needed some depth. Yeah. Um, and it was Jeez. either women who felt like, oh, uh, you know, I don't want to audition for this because it's a it's self tape. You know, I want to offer only, mm-hmm. which is fine. But we couldn't really, we couldn't really juggle those consequences. We couldn't really put that at stake because we knew how important the character of Venus was. Yeah. Um. And so we had limited auditions, and so Raquel was very much a fresh face that came into the game. Wow. And she blew us away, and she really brought she the character good, yeah. of Venus to life. But again, that's that's kind of the the. Uh, unexpected you know joy of directing is that you know sometimes you can find a, a hidden gem and you can really pull mm-hmm. that talent out yeah and you know that's that's not for me to say oh i discovered that person or anything else again it was that was her preparation mm-hmm. and moment you know that was her opportunity her opportunity yeah yeah hey man let me see if there's anything else I, I, I ain't asked. Come on, man. We got questions. We got, oh, I, got, I, got, I got questions, but I'm like, man, I know I got time. Like, man, this is going to be a long one. I already know. This is going to be, but it's good. Uh, uh, uh. 
said to myself, this is this is my Charlemagne the God moment. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 because because I don't. How would you say? <laughs> like like I said, my my public appearance has I, you know I don't I don't come out the house you know yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah, I keep yeah. to myself yeah but but every now and again I love doing like interviews like this because it's, yeah. it's it's always refreshing because you forget to be honest with you I forget half of the shit that I do you know what I mean because yeah, yeah. you, I hate to say it but you're always looking for the next thing you mm-hmm. know human satisfaction once we achieve one thing we're looking for the next yeah um, and for me you know with with the goals that I would like to achieve. Some people say, you know, oh, man, you've done so much. I just say I'm just getting started. Mm. Um, so to, to, to have this opportunity uh, and for you to have me on yeah. your podcast and to, and to sit here and just talk amongst brothers and to share this wisdom, this is exciting. This feels like yeah. my Kanye Charlemagne moment where yeah. I just come out of my cave and <laughs> yeah, go right yeah, back yeah. in. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Right <laughs> after this interview, <laughs> crawling, crawling right back into my studio and going right yeah, back right. to work. <laughs> No, that's and that's the thing. Like I think when, when I was like doing research and everything, I didn't really see that many in person like no, no, uh, no. Uh, interviews with you. Like I seen like some some Skype ones and stuff like that. Sure. But I was like, oh man, this is gonna be an honor. This is cool. Like and then yeah, ah. like, yeah. It, it it's a mix between like, look, I I find myself slivered in a in a very uh, interesting way within the business. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I think to myself, some of the great character actors, and again, you know if people would like to put me in this category or not, but sometimes they, they fall below the surface. Mm-hmm. You know, there's movie, there's movie stars and then character actors. And then there's yeah. some people who just do great work. Yeah. Um, and I admire the people who just do great work. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm in this weird space within my career currently where like I've done, you know, films that I'm extremely proud of and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, happy of the work that I put forth, but also too, I still get to kind of keep somewhat of my uh, uh, anonymous, you know, way of moving about, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I could still go out and still be a person, yeah, you know, at this yeah. stage before things sort of really take You're off. You're crazy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this stage, you know, I kind of... Cherish that, man. I do. I cherish yeah. it for what it is. Uh, and and I look to my OGs, and my OGs are, always weren't the most vocal. You know, we come from a time where, like, our OGs really, like, they did their work, and then they, they fell back. Yeah. They fell back, and they waited, you know, not waited, I don't want to say it like that, but, you know, they were able to go live their lives. Yeah. Um, and one of the things for me is I know it's counterproductive to me being a public figure because as public figures, especially in the world of like TikTok and Instagram, everybody wants to be so mm-hmm. forward, forward, mm-hmm. forward in your face. And for me, post pandemic, uh, it was really important to me to get to know myself more. Mm. Um, it was, it was important for me to, uh, love myself and be comfortable with myself and just be, mm. um, and so I'm always on a constant pursuit of what's going to make me the happiest. And sometimes me disconnecting, sometimes me being alone. Yeah. Um, I yeah. can confidently say within the last few years, me being alone now has been the happiest I've ever been in life. Really? And my spirit right now just wants to roam. So I love personal one-to-one connections that yeah. don't always need to be shared. Yeah. I love traveling and meeting new people. You know, I, I don't mind just kind of... Uh, uh, you know, getting lost to the world and then popping up every so now and again. Yeah. And that's probably how I'm going to always keep it. Like, I'll pop up, I'll do my thing, you know, I don't mind being the, the public face, but yeah, I really do enjoy uh, being able to, to still put the importance of being a human first. Mm. And especially once I have a family and whatnot, you know, I like how uh, some of our, some of our, you know, the people we admire, some of the goats up there are doing yeah. it now, we're like, Hey, my children don't need to be doing all that. Yeah, you, the you anonymity, you, man. You, you, you don't. You don't need a, a baby photo of of you know yeah. my young and just yet. You know yeah, what I mean? You got to like, protect that. You got to protect that anonymity, man. You yeah, gotta... protect it as long because everybody is so praying for that next moment of like, well, what can you tell us now? Mm-hmm. What sandwich are you eating today? How did you brush your teeth? <laughs> did you wipe your ass from front to back or back to front? You know? <laughs> back to front. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You've seen the industry change from like before social media and before, you know, self tapes and all of that stuff. So how has that transition been for you? Um, you can never be afraid of change. Mm-hmm. I know I've been resistant of it. I've definitely been resistant of social media yeah. uh, in the past, but I do understand the value uh, and the importance and how much it can be a tool. Yeah. You can't be afraid of change at the same time, too. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you got to, again, find what works for you. Yeah. 
You know, a lot of people say, well, why aren't you more active on social or why aren't, why don't you have your numbers up? And yes, there's a world in which I can get my numbers up and, and, and do, you know, the little content here or there. But that's not what I envision for myself. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, what I envision for myself is, is the same reason why, you know, some of my peers respect me in the way they do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say you can't get respect the other way either. Yeah. I immensely respect those who are doing it right now and, and who are thriving and have made a life for themselves. Mm -hmm. That was their journey. Exactly. Um, so, so, you know, at this point in time, I don't really knock anybody. And even from the standpoint of like, oh, studios are only hiring people with numbers. They're not hiring people with social stats. Mm. I've, I've seen that peak already, and then I've also seen how it hasn't worked, and studios have seen how it hasn't worked either. Yeah. So, you know, they're all trial and test periods. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know what I do and what I bring to the table, and I know uh, how valuable it is, and I know that certain people are looking for that. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm cool with staying in my lane because I know what's destined for me is meant to be for me. Um, and as long as I never stop working, and again, this goes to my advice to any you know young actor, performer, filmmaker, whatever it may be. Yeah. As long as you live within your truth and you continue to put that forward, you will shine. Mm -hmm. You can't help but not shine. Yeah. Um, so that's the way I, I tend to look at all of this, like TikTok stars and all that. Like, none of that really phase me. Like, I'm proud and happy for them. That's just not my lane. You exactly. Know, what I mean? know your lane. You gotta know your lane, man. Yeah, it's it, it's not my lane. Um, many of my buddies are, are making money. They're providing for their families. They're providing for their friends. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been able to profit off of that. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, maybe the money that you make today is not the money that I make tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same way I felt coming into the game when, when you know, I was all and all that. But some of my friends were serious regulars. Uh, yeah. They had their own shows on Disney and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. Life was booming for them. Yeah. Tables have turned since then. Mm. You know, and and. Yeah. and Again, that was their journey then. Yeah. Then my journey was here. Exactly. And again, it's all a mutual respect. If you respect me when I'm on the come up and I respect you on the come up, then that, that oh, means good. there's work for everybody. There's enough food on the table for everybody. Everybody eats, B. Yep. Everybody eats, man. Denzel. This was a good one, brother. This is gonna be this this is gonna be a Joe Rogan episode. <laughs> oh man. That, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> this was good, man. Um I mean that's your camera right there. What you got? What you got in the? What you got in the can, man? What's 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 next for Denzel Whitaker? What's next for Black Mouth? Like what's what you got lined up? Which camera are we looking at? This is right here. Oh, okay, what's up? <laughs> you know, sipping this green tea, all organic. <laughs> all you know organic. what I mean? Very peaceful. We doing numbers over here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Now that's a little Larry June talk. <laughs> um, Let's see what's next. Um, I'm developing two projects right now. Of course, uh, the most knows, uh, newsworthy, I should say, is 5150. Yeah. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. uh, any black-led production companies, come holla at your boy, because you know 5150, we got to represent for the culture. Come we on. definitely got to take that out there. HBO, what's up? Holla at me. Come on. Um, past that, you can always find me on at Blackmouth. Like I just said, I am very much obscure in the shadows, so uh, <laughs> when I do pop out, trust me, it's going to be some anime reference, or it's going to be <laughs> rap music that I love, or maybe I will showcase a piece of myself or some new photos because I need to update everything. <laughs> At Blackmouth is how you can find me. Uh, past that, I do have some films on the way, some stuff that I just shot, and some stuff that's in the can, so uh, get excited for that. Go and on. you never know where you're going to find me. Uh, even if we're just sitting at a pizza shop or I'm taking a bite of salmon, come up and say hi. <laughs> and one of these days, I'm probably going to turn into a live salmon. I love you all. No, seriously, with, without me joking, um, follow your dreams, follow your passions, keep God first place, yep. and uh, just leave with love. That's, that's all I have to say. Leave with love. Um, try to clear the hate and the ego out of your heart and um, learn to appreciate what we have now before it's gone tomorrow. I love that man. And where, and where can the people find uh, 5150? Because it was in the Tribeca Film Festival. Like, where yes. can they? Yes. Where can they see this? Because they need to see it. Give them a little. What, what's it about? Just to get them, you know. Well, I appreciate. it. Look, 5150. Um, we were doing excellent numbers. We won Audience Award at Series Fest. <laughs> Uh, we were also uh, official selection at Tribeca and both Holly Short. Shout out to them. Thank you so much for having us. Come 5150 on. can be seen on Argo, Short of the Week, Director's Notes, and directly on Vimeo as well. Um, so check out any of those four streamers, 18 minutes short. Please go enjoy that. Yes. Uh, if you if you love it, if it resonates with you, reach out to me. Uh, reach out to any of us involved. We would love to hear from you. On acting, what on that on the acting lane? What you got going? What you mean? 
what, what, what are you working on something right now that you can speak of? Like, what, what should people look out for you on next? Uh, or have I, you shot something and it's done and it's about to come out? Listen, two, pro- two projects I could talk about right now. One of them is called Get Rich Quick. Come on. Um, we just wrapped that this week. Um, and another project I just wrapped about maybe two months ago is called The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster. Shout out Bomani. Right. Um, shout out Layla. Both of you guys are phenomenal. Shout out uh, Chad. Um, everybody's phenomenal in Angry Black Girl and Her Monster. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited again about just uplifting our voice. Bomani wrote a wonderful piece uh, and he led the ship well. And again, very much like my story with 5150, he's been sitting on this for a while. So. We definitely want to magnify and lift our brother up for the culture. Yeah. Um, really excited for you guys to see my take on the character that I bring to the screen because it's very much so not within my wheelhouse of, of something I usually put forth, but I think it's going to surprise you guys. Okay, okay, okay. And those are those are those are films. Both those films. Those are both films. Those okay. are both films. And All then right. you know, a couple other things in the talk. So you just gotta wait. Just got just gotta wait. Just gotta wait, y'all. Hey man, Denzel Woodcock, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Giving Game the Podcast. My boy Denzel Whitaker dropped some gems today, y'all. I hope y'all picked them bad boys up. <laughs> Put them to use. Um, make sure y'all subscribe, like, and comment for more. We got some amazing guests lined up. But until then, I'll see y'all next week with a new guest with some new game. We out. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you. Peace. Peace.